Love is blind. These niggas is out of their mind. Hey y'all, hey. Welcome. Ooh, ooh hold on. <coughs> Sorry. Ooh. That's I didn't mean to do that. I, I, I've been drinking wine since I got home from work. Had a banging dinner. I almost choked. Bear with me, y'all. I got the wine in my system. Of course, it's Bart and Nora. And listen, I am ready to loosely recap this fuckery of a show called Love is Blind Season 6, a.k.a. The Limerence Show. Yes, Limerence. Shout out to one of the viewers who subscribed because I knew what Limerence was. Shout out to you. I forgot um, your name. But yes, this is The Limerence Show because these people... And, and look up what Limerence means because... You're basically, you know, talking to each other sight unseen and whispering sweet nothings to each other and falling in love with the idea. These people are in love with the idea of each other. And the reason why a lot of it does not work out is because when they finally meet in person, they're deflated. Okay. All of that limerence, all of that, um, that rush that it's not, not adrenaline. I would say it's, um, Y'all, I'm drawing a blank, man. I, I think I, I had like two glasses of wine and that wine is, I'm a lightweight. So that rush of oxytocin, I think, or, or whatever hormone, um, it deflates. And when it deflates, it's a bad feeling, okay? When you come down from a high, you know, I guess that's what happens to um, drug addicts. Coming down from that high is, it's, it's devastating, so that's why I call this the Limerence Show. It's also the fuckboy show because fuckboys are abound. I mean, it, when is it going to end? And when are we as women going to stop falling for fuckboy antics? I, I just, I'm over this show. This show also has become the clout show because I feel like a lot of these people are here to gain clout. Some people, like some of the women, I feel like they are honestly looking for love. But many of the guys, especially, I, listen, let's go over um, some of the scenes, not everything, and then we'll go over what's going on in social media. So they're still in the DR, right? They're in Punta, Punta Connor and um, Chelsea. So we have Laura. Uh, Laura is the old face one who she's like 30, but she's giving me 42. We got Chelsea, who is Megan Wolf and AD. I'm gonna call her wig. Okay. Bye wig. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. AD. It's not just me. And I'm glad I've been reading the comments. It's not just me. Everyone is dissatisfied with 80s presentation with her wig and the eyelashes. But again, I hope that she, um, Ooh, listen, I'm side note. I have Netflix. Oh my God. I am watching the new movie with Kelly Rowland. Um, it's a Tyler Perry, Maya culpa, and it's on mute right now, but I just looked up real quick and there's like a whole sex scene. So I'm gonna put it on pause. I'm gonna watch this shit later. But anyways, so I hope AD will redeem herself and um, find a hairstylist who does not want to see her fail and, and um, give her some retribution. So, okay, um, what are we going over? They all had sex. I feel like they been was having sex, but one of the girls, they were just waiting for the other to admit it. What's, listen, if you're going to do something, if you're going to have sex, right, what are you ashamed of? If it's, if you're going to do an action that you know, you will be ashamed of, or you're, you're not proud of yourself. Don't do it. Don't do it. And one of them justified it by saying, Oh, we're engaged. We're engaged women. Yes, you're engaged, but you really don't know homeboy like that. Y'all really don't. And it's, I'm just, it's astounding that people go on these shows and they literally like fall into bed the first time they meet. I don't know how they do it, but those three did. The jury's still on out with um, Johnny Applehead and Puerto Rican Amy. I'm not sure what if they did, if they didn't. He said they were taking it slow, okay? So let's talk about the next scene. Um, another scene between Puerto Rican Amy, Johnny Applehead, so are they, if they are having sex, are they not using protection? Is Johnny 
anti-condom because he made it seem like, and I didn't understand the scene. He was like, I thought you were on birth control. I don't want to have a kid. I don't, yes, sir, sir, you can use a condom unless he's one of those people that do not trust condoms. Um, or some, some men just simply do not like condoms because they can't get, um, the same sensation. Yes. You condoms are, you, you don't feel anything from them that much, but he was just this whole birth control thing. And he does, I understand he doesn't want to have kids early or without being prepared, but, uh, and, um, Amy does not want to get on birth control and rightfully so I wholeheartedly agree with her. And I'm about to tell you guys, um, a story. I'll go into that in a few seconds. So Johnny, yeah, I wasn't understanding. He said he thought all women were on birth control and he's going to take it slow with the sex because, you know, he's afraid of an accident. I guess maybe he's afraid of the condom slipping off. Um, I don't know. It, I found it weird unless he likes to go raw dog and just does not want to use condoms at all. But condoms, I believe, have a 98 percent effective rate from what I, I understand. Anyhow, back to birth control. So I totally understand Amy because she was talking about her concerns with hormone fluctuations, um, caused by birth control. Specifically, you have, um, like Depo back in the day, I know a lot of girls who took the Depo shot and it causes a lot of weight gain and breakthrough bleeding. And then um, there is the ortho tricycline, which I was on, but I didn't do well on. I forgot what it, what the reason was, but it didn't work for me. I, I don't know if it gave me headaches. I forgot. So then they put me on ortho tricycline low and I was on ortho tricycline. I think I want to say all throughout college before that, I've always been a thin girl my whole life of a skinny mini. And then I went on birth control and I literally gained, I think I went from like 130 to my highest before kids was like 175. And it was due to the birth control. I was bloated, my skin, it was just, it really fucked up my hormones. So I stopped using um, ortho tricycline low. And you know what happened? My period literally never came. Like, my period was so abnormal. And in my nat natural state, my baseline, my period is every 28 days on the spot. So after I got off um, ortho, I never got my period ever. Like I think one year it came like once the whole entire year. And then I remember I went to the doctor and then they diagnosed me with PCOS. So, um, and they, I think they ran some tests about something about my pituitary. They wanted to check, I guess my thyroid and pituitary and all that. And I was like, ah, I'm good. So being the scientist that I am, I went and researched natural ways. Listen to me. I went and researched natural ways because PCOS, the main culprit is your hormones um, are elevated. So my prolactin from my labs was elevated. So I went and researched and read studies on how to naturally lower your, your prolactin. That's what I did. And so I started taking herbs like rhodiola is really good. You have to increase your vitamin D and that's why us as African, and I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I also like to educate people too and tell my experiences. We it's, it's hard for African Americans to get enough vitamin D because of our melanin, because of our, our, our skin complexion. Um, and you get vitamin D from the sunlight. If you're not getting enough sunlight, you will not get the required vitamin D that you need um, to sustain like homeostasis. So you'll have a lot of issues um, physically due to low vitamin D. I remember once my vitamin D went down to a five. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, normal is like I don't know, 25 minimum is like 25 or something. And it was so low that, um, and you know, you need vitamin D for bone health. My foot was fractured, you know, a stress fracture just from not having, I was on my feet a lot and not having enough vitamin D. Same thing happened to my cousin. Hers was really low. So they put me on 50,000 units, which is a lot, uh, 50,000 units once a week of vitamin D. And then it went up and I still don't have, um, enough vitamin D sometimes I try, but anyhow, 
Rhodiola is good. Vitex, um, that's the herb, it, Agnes Castus. It's really good. When I tell you my, those herbs regulated, like seriously regulated my hormones, like so regular. And I, and what I also did is I lost a gang of weight. I lost so much weight. I went back to my, my normal. And I remember the doctor, what made me want to get better and address my PCOS naturally was that my doctor told me I won't be able to have kids naturally. I'll have to do in vitro. Right. And I didn't want to do that. I really did not. So let me tell you guys something. As soon as I, you know, I, um, I healed myself from PCOS. Literally, I got like I got pregnant. I got pregnant, y'all. Like out of nowhere, it was a huge shock. But my period came every 28 days and I got pregnant and since then all my three kids have been conceived naturally. Like I've never had a problem um getting pregnant. And I swear to you, it's the Agnes Castis. I still have symptoms and touches of PCOS. Like I have a lot of chin hair sometimes. And I really think that's um, due to my insulin too. Also insulin resistance can also attribute to PCOS. But, and my sister also suffers from PCOS. I told her to take Vitex because her period would literally come once a year. So I, she was working on it. She has a lot of facial hair too. She was working on it. Um, she was told she can't have kids. She gave up, you know, and then out of nowhere, my sister found out she was pregnant at seven months. So now I have my little nephew um, and, you know, we had no idea. So it's, listen, whoever has PCOS, do not listen to all these doctors. Yes, it may be harder, but if you're actively trying to treat it, um, trying to lower your, your, um, sugar because that leads to insulin resistance. Take those herbs, take vitamin D, take Vitex Agnes Castus, take rhodiola. And I'm telling you, we didn't think my sister would ever have kids ever. So she could have a kid. And I think she miscarried once too. Um, which can happen with PCOS. If she can have a kid, you guys can have a kid. So that's, listen, that's my, uh, what you call it. That's my, um, Ted talk for the day. All right. So let's get back. So yeah, Johnny Applehead, I don't know what, what it was. I think she even, Amy even suggested like a, um, a vasectomy, which is, I, I mean, I guess she was right in saying that because he was basically like getting on her, harping on her. She was like, no, I'm not getting on birth control. You could get a vasectomy. And you know what? If it's important to him, he should. And vasectomies are reversible. So he should be the one to, um, you know, to do something about it. If you, if a woman doesn't want to get on birth control, you can't force her because it does take a toll on your body. So anyhow, that's that on that. Um, let's move to clay and AD. I still don't think clay is attracted to AD like that. I think it's more lust. They, they, they are in limerence. Okay. I think clay is playing a game on her. He's running game on her. AD is eating it up. And I feel bad. Listen, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that they're married and living happily ever after. Oh my God. Y'all should see this scene and may a cope. Oh my God. Yo, this dude is literally, he is like grinding. They're in paint. I think he's an artist and grinding on top of Kelly. I cannot believe Kelly did this move. Oh my God. Y'all, let me hurry up with this and go watch this movie. Oh my God. Wow, that was a scene. Anyways, we're going to watch that later. So Clay is, um, he's showing his fuck boy nature because he's discuss he's having a discussion with D with, with AD and it's like he's setting her up or preparing her for his future fuckboy antics. He's like, yeah, I don't know if, you know, I struggle with a lot of demons. You know, my dad was unfaithful um, to my mom. And, you know, my dad took me on his exploits and my mom doesn't even know or some crap like that. Or was that the last? No, he said that this, yes, this episode we was just talking about fuckboy antics. It's like, He's telling her, so if I cheat, you know, don't say, don't say that I didn't warn you because 
this is what happened to me. This is all I know. So this is my reason why if I cheat in the future, it's, I'm just built like that. It's built in me. It's ingrained in me. Bullshit. Are you fucking kidding? Listen, do y'all see this picture of AD? That was my face the whole time. This was my face the whole, all three episodes. Cause I'm like, what the, what in the fuck is going on? All right. Clay is half Guyanese, okay? Guyanese, y'all know Caribbean men, Trinidadian men. If you go on TikTok and Instagram, they're always talking about Haitian men, Haitian men, Haitian men. Jamaican men are not, you know, they're not faithful. I know that. I know it very well, okay? Almost every man, Haitian man that I know, almost like 98% of Haitian men are unfaithful. The only ones that I know for sure, because, and my mom told me, my mom has a brother who she says, no, he's, he's a good dude. Like he is faithful and committed to his one wife. And then I have a, a paternal uncle who God rest the dead. Um, he was from all accounts was faithful to his wife in love with her, you know, um, loved her dearly. I remember even in my church, some of these men, I'm finding out now as an adult, like these men were cheating on their wives, but in church, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I couldn't believe it. And I was so naive. You know, you're so naive. What I'm finding out as an adult is shocking because you are, we're raised up so traditional. Like we, we were raised a lot of Haitians were raised with the nuclear family intact in mind, but then, and that's the image that I was given as a child. But now as an adult, I'm like, are you kidding me? So homeboy was cheating with this person, with that person, with this person. And we consider these people like good people, good men. I just can't believe it. I remember even my uncle um, took me and my cousins like to go meet, to like he was just hanging out with some woman. Later on, I found out that was his freaking mistress. I couldn't believe it. So I understand where Clay is coming from. It's not an excuse because I've, I've seen cheating as a woman. You don't see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I'm going to allow my husband to cheat. Fuck no. Hell fucking no. No, I will not accept that. I will not accept that. A lot of Haitian women do accept it. They see it as that's just how men are. I've seen, I've been conditioned to think that way. I still don't accept that. And I will never accept that. You want to cheat? Go that way. Bye. So AD kind of pissed me off because she was like nodding her head. She looked like a freaking bobblehead doll. Everything he was saying, it's like she was just eating it up. And you know what that is, guys? That's limerence. First of all, he's manipulating her and he's trying to introduce it in a way like he did it so suave in such a caring way. Listen, I know all these antics. I've been through it with nar narcissists and manipulation and to see her sitting there and eating it up and like nodding, like she sympathizes and understands him. I, it just really breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I couldn't believe it. And she's so in love, but she's so enamored by him and his act. You see how he acts? He's like, yeah, come here. Girl. Let me give you a kiss. I love the red light. Stop kiss. And she's just lapping it all up. Women, we got to get smarter. Men, and I'm not saying all to, to my, my guys out there, not all, but a lot of what we're seeing is some fuck boy shit. Women, we have to be more scrutinizing with these men. Like, look, and I know everything is red flag. Listen, we got red flags galore. And some of y'all women still falling for the okie doke. Look at um what what just happened with Issa, Issa, Von, Issa Tisa, Issa, the girl with the 50 part. Do y'all know last Saturday, I went to my kids' basketball games. I went to two basketball games. I went to Walmart. I went to ShopRite. All while listening to all 50 parts. That was a fucking roller coaster. A roller coaster just like 80s head. <laughs> no, but for real. 
Issa, Misa, what's her name? What's that lady's name with her with her with her husband that said he was gonna buy um a seven hundred thousand dollar house all cash? As soon as I heard that, I would have divorced him right there and then. What is it with us women where we just don't see through the bullshit? I could understand, you know, one inconsistency, two inconsistencies or something that sounds like bullshit, but this dude carried on for months. And I know, you know what? I, I do think it starts with self-love and she did say that no self-love, you will fall for anything. You will. And AD, that's why I question her self-worth. Because I feel like Clay is playing in her face. And I feel like he's seeing, he's like inching with his stories more and more closer to, you know, um, to his fuckboy behavior. He's introducing it slowly and he's seeing how gullible she is. And then he's going to inch some more towards and then keep, you know, adding more and more. And it's just like, AD, come on. It was just like, Paige, what was her name? Paige, yes, Paige from, um, is that Married at First Sight? Paige and Chris, oh my God, that was painful to watch. That was painful because Paige, again, again, she just kept letting him and letting him and letting him feed her bullshit, feed her bullshit. And I couldn't believe it. And for him to play in her face and try to insult her, no, sir. No, sir. Absolutely not. We have to love ourselves. And my mom always taught me this. My mom always taught me, girl, don't let any man step to you any kind of way. You better make these men fucking kneel in front of you at your presence. That's how it should be. But that also starts with how you carry yourself. My mom always told me this. She also told me once, and I kept this in mind, which I don't fully agree with, but I understand the gist. She said, and I'm going to say it in Creole. She said, Lot fi se toshon, make sure ou même ou se bel nap. Which, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to um, translate it. So toshon is basically a dish rag like a wash rag. So you know how you're cleaning like a, like a, a bar, what do you call it? Like a bar mop. So toshon is like a, a rag. It's just like a rag. When you're washing dishes, you keep it in the kitchen. You, you know, you, everybody got that rag where when you're done washing dishes, you wipe up all the water on the counters, you clean up the counters, you know, wipe up all the water, whatever spills on the counter. Ben nap is basically like Growing up, my mom had like a, she had our kitchen area, which was like, we ate like just the random, you know, kitchen table. And then she had like a formal last dining room and on the dining room, whenever we were having, um, visitors, she would break out the, what you call it? Oh my God, this wine. Let me take another sip. <laughs> she would break out the tablecloth. Yes. The fancy tablecloths. Like I'm talking about like ornate. My mom, Haitians, anybody Caribbean, Haitian out there, European, you know what I'm talking about. These motherfuckers be having like the most ornate fucking tablecloths that are made of like jacquard, jacquard. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Jacquard pat patterning, you know, like even like Buckingham Palace, you see like those ornate ass tablecloths. They're just exquisite. And my mom used to get them like handmade sometimes just for entertaining um, guests to your house. So my mother always said, listen, side pieces are the bar mops are like the dish rags. Make sure you are, um, the tablecloth, the fancy tablecloth. So I always, I understood what she meant. Basically don't be out here hoeing and letting men use you like, like a dish rag. Make sure you are the tablecloth. You're reserved for special guests. That means you are the woman that they will take. She basically meant they will take you to meet their parents. Make sure you are reserved for, for meeting the parents and the family. But I didn't like that because again, in Caribbean fashion, to me, I translated it to, yes, 
um, the, the bar mop is basically all the women that he's cheating out there with, right? All the women he's out there cheating with, but, but you are the, your wifey. Okay. You, your wifey, you're the one that's on his arm at church at this. I understood what she meant, but I just didn't like that. We got these bar mop and hoes out there that we're supposed to accept. You know, that's the only thing I disagree with my mom as I'm not ex accepting, um, side bitches. Like in, in, in my marriage, I don't know if my ex had any in retrospect, I'm sure he did, but in my mind, when I was married, oh no, there was no others, no others. Now that I'm older, I'm wiser. Mind you guys, I got married at 25. I'm 40 now. Um, now that I'm wiser, he probably did probably, but I didn't know about it. And I was, I didn't think there were any moving along. It all starts with, with self-love and AD. I, we don't know her, but what the optics are not looking good. And this dude is just fuck boying it up with her. So I hope clay, I, I don't know. He seems very charismatic, but also I'm, I'm, I'm getting from him that he's a clout chaser. I'm feeling that from him. All right. So where are we now? Um, yeah. So everybody get home, got home. Sorry. These were conversations I think they had when they got home to where, where are they from? North Carolina, South from one of the Carolinas. Um, earthworm Jim called Megan Wolf clingy and she had a meltdown. This girl's always having a meltdown. I, I I don't know. They had hot, passionate makeup sex after the whole booty gate with AD. And now she's still, she's insecure. Again, lack of self-love. She is insecure as hell because she was complaining that I guess he didn't give her a kiss. Girl, who the fuck cares? Who the fuck cares? And this is what I'm saying. He called her clingy because she, again, is demonstrating that she is more into him. Let them give him a chance to be into you. Give him a chance to shower you with adoration and, and praise you and, 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 you know, shower you with affection. My God, give the nigga a chance. Yo, I know earthworm Jim is tired. Poor boy. Anyways. So that was that. What, what else? Okay, here we go. Did y'all listen to my last video? I knew something was off with Kenneth and um, homegirl. What's her name? Shit, what is her name? Brittany. I knew something was off. I knew it. You could, listen, attraction is electrical. Attraction is energy. You can just see you like attraction is everything. When they first met, I, I said it in the last video, something was not quite right. Like Luther's curl, man, something wasn't right. And so now I don't know what, where the flip happened. If it was a D questioning, you know, um, if he will be okay with their interracial relationship. He knew she was white before he met her. So I don't know why that would be a problem. He should have thought it through in the pods. Or if he never thought about it, he should have never picked her. Excuse me. I, I just don't understand. Um, so they get home. No, no. They were in, when they were in Punta, Punta Cana, they were on some boat. When I tell you the silence between them was deafening, it was so awkward. I couldn't even, I had to skip through it. It was so awkward. And Netflix thinks they're slick because I feel like they enhanced the background noise. It was so loud. The silence was so loud. That's where the flip happened because you're not going to, you know, we're, we're, we're on vacation. You picked me, we're engaged. And then you're just sitting back and just not engaging me. Literally. No. So then they get back home and I don't know if he, he, I think he was disappearing and she tried to express to him. And you know what? He's a fuck boy. Cause he flipped it on her, but she tried to express like, do, are you not into me? Which is valid because he didn't seem like he was into her. And he's like, listen, I don't, I want us to go back to normal. 
This was a typical narcissistic reaction. But you have to keep in mind, these people like 24, 25, they're so young. I don't know why they're on this show. They are way too young. But what he did was, he was like, I don't want it to be like, you know, if if you feel one way or if I don't do something one day, then you automatically um, question my attraction for you. Then she was like, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. That's He was like, oh, okay, I thought so. All right. Then he disappears again and she brought it up. She's like, listen, what I, you know, I don't know what's going on between us. Her concerns were valid. They were valid. He flips it on her and says, sometimes you push me away and this and that. And, you know, uh, what else did he say? Um, I told, I told you everywhere I went, I went to get my hair twisted. I went to oh meet with my mentor. We're engaged. We just got together. Why aren't you? I don't understand. Why aren't you staying home with me? We need to get to know each other. Number one, number two. Okay. If you have errands to run, take me with you. Take, show me around, take me with you. So he's, he flipped it on her to where, and this is narcissistic abuse to where you begin apologizing when you had valid concerns to begin with, then he breaks up with her. It, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Again, I don't know if he was apprehensive about the interracial relationship. I don't know. I just don't know because of I don't know if it's because he felt like she was going to question his every move. It's not questioning. If someone ain't attracted to me, listen, I'm just let me know. And I'm out. I'm out. So the other, listen, the other theory that's been floating around social media, y'all is that he is gay. Now you can't really tell you can't really go by someone's appearance. He's not like your, you know, your brolic, you know, but even, listen, even some of the brolic most built dudes are, are, they can be DL too. You don't know. You can't go by, you can't go off of that. But I think there was something on Instagram. No, this was on Facebook where they're saying he's gay because his cousin confirmed it. I know he's really religious, right? He's a praise and worship leader. Um, and he, that's why he was abstaining from sex. But if it's true that he is, you know, gay, did he come on this show to try to negate any rumors out there about him? Um, did he, again, maybe he doesn't really abstain from sex, but he just said that. So, you know, to avoid having sex with her. I don't know, but this is what was posted. They said his cousin, let, let me share my screen real quick. His cousin, um, on Facebook, which I don't know how true this is. Again, people can manipulate, uh, images. All right. Where are we? Yep. Here we go. So more is coming out. L I B Netflix. Love is blind. Um, and it says he is gay. He's my cousin. That's what someone on Facebook said, someone said, are you really? And Kate Lynn says, yes. And then someone else says, so why he go on the show? And they said, simply to try and please his family. So see, that's there, there it is. If this is true, TV time, I guess. Kate Lynn child sounds about right though. Yeah. So I don't know how this would have pleased his family. Maybe he was going to go through with it. And then when he got back to reality, he, he probably said, I can't do this. Listen, it's not easy. It's really not easy to be gay in the black community um, and the African di diaspora, especially with, I'm speaking from a Caribbean, um, Caribbean point of view. It's, I've watched my best friend. I watched my best friend friend hide who he was for like what I'm telling you my best friend since I was two years old hide who he was because of our culture and our religion could never be himself um I remember growing up he would have crushes he would you know like girls and I I honestly thought he was straight 
And the only reason why I thought that is because I'm your best friend. You would tell me the truth. So in my mind, I'm like, if he was, he would tell me, you know what I mean? Like if he was, he would have told me he hasn't told me. So in my mind, he's not, you know, and I didn't understand because we were so young and he had to wait until his father passed away to come out at like maybe what, almost 40 years old, maybe. Um, he had to wait because Haitians, like they, they, it's just not accepted, especially in our religion as well. Um, it's just not accepted. And now he's married. I was the maid of honor at his wedding. Beautiful. One of the beautifulest, most, it was the gorgeous, most gorgeous weddings I've attended, been a part of, and he's happy, um, with his spouse, but it's just sad that people can't live in their truth. And if this is true about Kenneth, I get it. Okay. My only issue is you cannot play with people though, because if this is all true, it seems like, what's her name? I keep forgetting this girl's name. It seems like Brittany was really trying. Brittany was really trying. She was really into him. I could tell from the get-go, he was just not having it. He was not. He probably would have lived life on, on the DL. And I think he got home and said, I can't do this. Maybe his mentor is the one that said, if you don't, you know, because one of the conversations, I think he said, okay, I'm coming over. I think he told that person, I can't do it. And the person was like, then don't do it. So it was plotted that he was going to break up with her pretty sad because you're playing with people's emotions, you know? So it's like Brittany just happened to be collateral damage in all of this in someone's, you know, life where they where he's trying to navigate his life. It's not fair. I hope, I hope he told her in secret that would make me feel better because then I would know that she wasn't really hurt, but you know, I don't know anyways. Um, but I knew it. You can tell. I knew there was not much of attraction there. Um, again, if this if it is true with him, I think he used religion as a cover up, as an excuse, because they knew everybody was going to be knocking boots. And he said, I ain't knocking your boots. <laughs> so listen, let me know what you guys think. Do not forget to like and subscribe and let's have a conversation. Um, there's a lot of shit going on. I made a, another video before. Um, that's why I didn't talk about it, about who was it about not earthworm Jim. Um, oh yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy is, um, apparently was engaged before he came on the show. So that's one fuck shit that's going on. And then the other guy, um, the jolly green giant, the muscular one with the psoriasis on his hairline, I forgot his name and the mullet. He had a whole girlfriend throughout the, the taping. See, we, we're thinking all these guys are nice guys. They're nice guys. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. All right? So until next time, we'll see what's going to happen. I, child, I, I guess I'll keep watching, all right?